What are going on, folks? Today, I will be showing you why I undervolt my CPU and the benefits of said undervolting. Now, there is going to be some software that you're going to need in order to monitor and test your undervolt underclock or overclock, depending on how you look at it. As long as you change it from stock, you're on your own. Uh, so, there's going to be three software that I'm going to be using today. You can use any one that works for you. So for me, I use CPU-Z. And I'll just let this load up here. CPU-Z. Uh, this is here to verify clock speeds. I'll use hardware monitor as well, which will also verify clock speeds, utilization, and temperatures. And what you can use is ADA64 for stability testing but I found out that I used ADA64 before and I would stress test my CPU for 24 hours it would not crash but as soon as I load up certain applications that stress my CPU it would freeze up and lock up and I would have to go in and up the voltage until I got it stable now I stress test with OCC and I don't have that problem. It just gets it right and it takes care of it in a lot less time. I don't have to run my CPU for 24 hours for me to find out if it's stable. OCCT can take care of it in three to six hours. Now, with OCCT, uh, you will have two tabs here. OCCT is for testing CPU stability and CPU lint pack is for testing your cooling solutions efficiency. So your CPU heat sink, your water cooler, whatever it is that's cooling your CPU, you'll use CPU lint pack to make sure that it's able to cool it. Because this will dump a whole lot of heat into your system. Especially if you turn on AVX capable lint pack, that will dump a lot of heat. But for stability, you use OCCT, run it for three to six hours. If it's stable, doesn't crash, doesn't lock up, you're golden. Let's go over the specs on my system here. I'm running a i7-4790K. It's hooked up to a MSI Z97M gaming motherboard. 16 gigs of DDR3 memory. They're all set to default settings. So it's running at 1333 megahertz, but they're rated for 1600 megahertz if you set XMP up. Graphics, uh, it's got integrated graphics, the CPU at least. And I have an R9-290 that I have overclocked. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more about graphics card overclocking, I could do a video and show you my methodology of how I overclock my graphics card. So as you can see here, it's running at 1.248 volts and it dips down to as low as 1.15. What's wrong with this? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. If you have a KC or a CPU and you want to run it at stock, that's pretty much up to you if you want to do that. It's your money, your CPU, but if you want to get the most out of it, I would suggest overclocking. Now, I'm going to set this to run, and I'm going to ramble on for about a minute while this thing takes the startup. And I'm going to explain to you why you would want to manually set your overclock slash underclock. The thing with these Intel CPUs is that if it's going to work on a single threaded application, it will set the maximum clock speed for one core at the rated 4.4 gigahertz. All right, bear that in mind. Now, the more cores that you have active that are being utilized to 100%, the lower the overall clock speed will be. Now, you're gonna notice this as soon as the one minute mark starts here and the memory utilization and CPU utilization also goes up. Now, pay attention to what's going on right here. Okay, so CPU, CPU usage has skyrocketed to 100%, but look at the CPU cores here. They're all running at 4.2 gigahertz. That's how Intel has designed its CPUs to work. If you have a multi-threaded application and it's running 
all four cores and all eight threads it's gonna clock itself to 4.2 you're not really getting the 4.4 so what we're gonna do is gonna go into the BIOS and fix that and OCCT gives you a nice little chart out here and you can go in and look and da -da 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 it's a pretty neat software I like it. it gives you nice detailed information about your system when you're stability testing all right so I'll see you in the BIOS I'll be right back all right so now we're in the BIOS and the first place that you want to go is over to the OC tab now here is where you're gonna do all of your major changes to to the uh, CPU to make sure that it runs at the correct clock speed. So, firstly you're going to want to change this to advanced mode and remember what I talked about with the per core overclocking? This is where you can go in and set it up but in order to do it you know, quick and easy you just select all cores and select the CPU ratio and set it to 44 which is 4.4. Leave CPU ratio mode to uh, dynamic mode because if it's fixed it's gonna pin itself to 4.4 gigahertz uh, Intel speed step that pretty much does the same thing it raises and lowers the clock speed based on what it's doing enhanced turbo that means it will boost past the stock clock of 4 gigahertz and boost up to 4.2 on all cores or in our case now 4.4 Legacy tweaking, don't need to worry about that. OC Genie, no need to worry. Ring ratio, you can leave this at auto, but uh, a rule of thumb is to set the ring ratio between 2 to 400 mega, 200 to 400 megahertz below what the CP ratio is. Uh, so at stock, it's 4 gigahertz as you can see, so we're going to make sure that it stays at 4 gigahertz now moving down uh, remember our memory was running at 1333 but this memory that I have is rated for 1600 megahertz so what we're gonna do is enable the XMP profile and now it's gonna run at its rate speed of 1600 megahertz and if we continue to go down what we're gonna need to do now is set the uh, CPU core voltage now this is the voltage that we saw that was fluctuating from 1.264 to 1.15 now what you can do with your CPU is set it to 1 volt and see if, it, see if your computer boots uh, I know my computer doesn't so what I did was set it to 1.1 volts and see if the see if it booted if it did boot if it did boot then I would try and dial it back by 1.25 which it didn't boot so I was able to get it to boot to one at 1.1 1 .1. when I launched when I logged into the system it froze so that means I would have to bump up the voltage even more and I did this in 0 0.025 increments until it passed OCCT. So my final lowest possible voltage that I had for my CPU was 1.175 volts. Uh, you can pretty much leave everything else at auto. Don't need to toggle don't need to trouble anything else and once you have those settings dialed in which is the CPU core voltage XMP profile ring ratio and CPU core volt CPU core ratio you're gonna wanna either save this uh, you can save it under that profile I already have mine saved and dialed in as well as other overclocks that I'm working on so what I'm gonna do is just load this profile since I already have the settings in that one and go into OC just confirm it's at 4.4 4 gigahertz XMP is enabled and we're sitting at 1.175 volts 
All right, so now that that's out of the way, you can save and reboot, and we're gonna see you back in Windows. And we're back in Windows. So, I'm gonna load up the same software that we had before, CPU-Z. Load up CPU-Z there, just to confirm our clocks. I'm gonna load up hardware monitor. Put that over to the side here. Move this down. And we're gonna launch OCCT while we're at it. Now, as you can see here, the CPU voltage is not fluctuating. It is sitting pretty at 1.175. The core ratio is pretty much pinned at 4.4 gigahertz right now on all cores. That's good. We're gonna start this test. We're already seeing the results of pinning all four cores at 4.4 gigahertz. Alright, so OCCT is starting now. CPU utilization is all the way at 100%. And all four cores are banging away at 4.4 gigahertz. That's good. That's what we wanted. It's sipping power 1.175 volts. Uh, this reads at 1.174. That's fine. V droop. V droop is fine. Alright, so we're gonna stop it there. That's all we needed to run. And once you're done with your overclock and it's stable for the three to six hours in OCCT, what you're gonna wanna do is go to your power options and put it back to balanced. Now you can leave it at balanced or you know, balanced will fluctuate the CPU cores, but I prefer to put it on, I prefer to create my own profile where it maxes all cores when it needs to and drops it off whenever it needs to. So yeah, it will go all the way down to 800 megahertz when it's not doing anything. But because I'm recording and you know this monitoring software is running, uh, I honestly don't think it will go that low. Unless I put it in power saving probably. But that's it for today. I hope you learned something. If you liked what I did, if you want to see more, then leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know exactly what you want to see next. I'm Skeptic Crab, and I'll catch you in the next one. Walk good.